Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Adventures in Eagle Territory. Today, we are in our first floor classroom here at the National Eagle Center. Now, probably one of the highlights for most of our visitors coming to the Eagle Center is seeing one of our Eagle Ambassadors about this far away. At the same time, being able to look outside our windows and maybe seeing a wild eagle flying by outside. That's a pretty cool experience. Probably the next favorite on most of our guests is being able to come into this class where we are today and getting a chance to learn more about our eagles in a very fun and engaging program. Typically, we'll bring the eagle in uh, towards the end of that program. Sometimes we offer them their lunch, sometimes they don't. But the cool part is getting to see an eagle in front of this amazing mural that is back here behind me. This mural was done by a local artist named Sue Monday uh, back in 2012. Since that, she has done two other murals throughout her building. We'll, we'll focus on those in another episode or two here. What I'd like to do is back off to be able to show you the entire mural. From where we come in, when we come into the classroom, to the entire breadth of the wall, here is the entire mural. Now, there are many things within it painted to use as educational pieces for us to talk about. For example, up here, we use this one quite a bit. There is one of our eagle nests in there. And uh, in the nest, you can see there is one juvenile eagle still in there. Typically, eagles lay two to three eggs. Now, right now, in this one, uh, there are two of the young that have hatched. One is sitting out on the edge, but you'll notice off to the left, the other one has just taken its first flight from the nest. And above it and to the right uh, is one of the parents. But still sitting and watching the whole ordeal going on is the other parent sitting in the tree, in that cottonwood tree, along a backwater slough here of the Mississippi River Valley. So there are many things that we can talk about, and we will do that over the next couple of sessions here as you tune in to Adventures in the Eagle Territory. But as we look over here, you can see there are some turtles out sunning themselves on a log. Now it's a little early for here, at least right now, for turtles to be out sunning on a log, but it won't be long but the red-winged blackbirds, as you can see to the right of the turtle there, are definitely back and proclaiming their territory. But what I'd like to focus on today is up this river birch tree here. On the left-hand side here, we have some action going on. And as we zoom in on that action, we are going to be able to see there are several birds that seem to be flying or hovering around this particular bird. The bird in the center is a red-shouldered hawk. It is a fairly common bird of the bottomland hardwood forest across the southern United States, all the way down into Florida. It does just barely reach its range into this part of Minnesota in the habitat that's just across the river from the National Eagle Center. Well, this red-shouldered hawk is about to land on this branch, but he's already caught the attention of several other birds. If you look directly above him, there's a black cap chickadee. Now we can probably hear the black cap chickadee calling at that regular hawk, going chickadee dee dee, chickadee dee dee, chickadee dee dee. That's their, basically their way of letting this regular hawk know that we know you are here, we don't like that you're here, and we want you to leave. And I'm gonna try to make as much noise as we can, and hopefully other birds in the area will come and help me to let you know that you are a bad guy to us, you might eat us, you might eat our young, and we want you to leave our area. And so you can see it has attracted a couple other birds. To the left of the red shouldered hawk, we have that beautiful yellow bird that is a prothonotary warbler that also lives in the same habitat, the bottomland hardwood forest. It nests fairly low to the ground and nests in cavities in trees that are often built uh, by woodpeckers. In fact, in the trees that you can see to the right there, the trunks, you will notice a couple of holes there drilled uh, and holes made by woodpeckers. To the right of that is the cerulean warbler. The cerulean warbler lives at the very tops of the trees, kind of that beautiful blue color like the sky, cerulean. And all of these birds are together saying, you need to get out of our area. Now the red tailed hawk is probably very upset about all of this going on and is probably making calls as well uh, at the same time to let them know that this is my area as well and I want you to leave and I'm gonna sound really vicious to make you leave. So there was the red shouldered hawk calling. You hear that over the area when you're going through the bottomland hardwood forest, that beautiful 
high-pitched scream. Beautiful, I don't know if I'd call it that, but uh, definitely, uh, definitely a scream that gets your attention of the red-shouldered hawk. Now, these birds are doing a process called mobbing. A mobbing is where, as we described before, where they gang up to let other birds know that this is their space. You may have seen a, a red-shelled hawk being mobbed by a crow, or a crow being mobbed by a smaller bird. In fact, many of you probably know, or hopefully you know the story, about Benjamin Franklin. Right after the uh, Declaration of Independence was signed in 1776, the Continental Congress got together to decide our nation's symbol, our nation's emblem. Now, they looked around the world and tried to figure out the best particular one, and many countries around the world, many places around the world, had used eagles. Well, Mr. Franklin, this is all in a letter that he wrote to his daughter, Sarah, was apparently opposed to having the bald eagle as our nation's symbol. He said in this letter to his daughter, Sarah, that a Eagle is a bird of bad moral character and a rank coward. A rank coward. Why would Benjamin Franklin say that about the eagle? Well, he apparently saw an eagle being mobbed by a bird. This little bird was an eastern kingbird. That little eastern kingbird was dive bombing that majestic big bald eagle and that eastern kingbird made that bald eagle fly away out of its territory. And old Benjamin Franklin thought that eagle was being a rank coward for doing that. But we now know that mobbing is done to let others know that this is their space. And it would be very hard for the eagle to turn around and try to grab that much aptly flying eastern kingbird. Now when we have our classes here at the National Eagle Center, especially with our kids, I often talk about Mr. Benjamin Franklin uh, and his choice for the nation's symbol. And I often tell the kids, as they look at me, they know that I'm a little bit older than they are, and so I tell them, and I hope that they'll realize and believe that uh, maybe I was there and having a chance to chat with Mr. Franklin and share my disbelief on why he would want the bald eagle as our nation's symbol. Thankfully, others won out, and Benjamin Franklin, choice of the wild turkey, was not there. And thankfully, we have the bald eagle as our nation's symbol.